today my guest is Mr. Dick Olick. A lot of you are familiar with Dick and he's written three books for the building service contracting industry. So we're really thrilled to have you here in person for a change. Oh, so Glad to be here, happy to be here. Good, well recently Dick did a presentation at the BSCAI convention. It was called Winning the Bid and Winning the Customer, What's the Difference? Uh, I was really kind of um, <laughs> intrigued about the title because it has the word bid in it. Now if you know Dick, you know that he doesn't like that word too much. <laughs> I hate that word. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let's just tell people why you don't like the word bid and why he does like the word proposal. Okay, thank you. I, I'll be happy to because it is, as you know, Gene, it's been one of my things ever since I've been in existence in this business because, you know, if <clears throat> I use this water usually as, a, as an example. If I put two bottles of water out here, or if I give you this water and I say, will you give me a dollar for that? But I got another one here, I'll give 50 cents. Which one do you want? Now, if you look at water, a bottle of water of Aquafina is the same, isn't it? It's a commodity. Right. So it's gonna go the same way. And so when we call a customer or a prospect and we say, can I bid your janitor service? Or when are you gonna go out for bid? I hear that a lot. Yeah. Hmm? And I even, you know, I see that constantly can I I want to bid your janitor service and when you say that what have you done you said I'm no different than anybody else I have a commodity to sell to you exactly and when I talk to people about that they say no my service is better than anybody else's and yet you know if all you're gonna do is bid it just go in there with a nice vanity fair napkin and just write down your you know I you've heard me say this yep don't just take a regular cocktail napkin, you know, make it fancy so that at least your your bid looks better than anybody <laughs> else. And we'll just write a bid down. Say, so you know, okay, that and then I'll hand it to you. There I yeah. am. And you say, Oh, that price is good or that price is bad. And that's it. Because when we say can I bid, that's all you've done, right? right. You've given them a price, basically. You've given them a price. Yeah. And even though you haven't said that, and people will take issue with me on that, what you've really said is I got the same janitor service as everybody else has. So here's my price for my commodity. And that's not really what business we should be in. Right. We should be in the business of offering proposals right. so that we can offer a, 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 an opportunity for our prospect to see how we differ from other people. Right. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. It, you know, so it's, it's kind of a mind shift of changing that vocabulary yeah, yeah. from the word bid, and I do it myself, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to it's just a habit for a lot of us. But really, you need to shift that word bid into proposal. And I think you, you actually change your thinking on what you're actually doing. Yeah, and you know, it, when we think of bidding and we think of low bidding, you know, I want to bid. We really put ourselves, we've really done it to ourselves in this industry, and I may be sounding a little bit scolding to people that are listening to this, but when we ask people if we can bid, we're, we're implying immediately that our price is gonna be cheaper, right? Right. Rather than what value do we bring to that prospect. Right. So tell our audience really what you know a proposal means. That's when you put together a packet of information to your to your, at this point, suspect or prospect, and you, and you take them through things like your commitment to professionalism to this industry, your commitment to the community. You know, if you're in a smaller community, do you belong to Kiwanis, do you belong to Rotary, do you belong to Civitan or whatever, Chamber of Commerce, that you're actually involved and you're a piece of the community, you're a part of the community, you're not just somebody that runs out and bids janitor service and your commitment you know, to, the, to the entire industry. Are you got professional designations? You know, have you become an RBSM? Have you become a certified building service executive? SIMS, green, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things there. How much have you committed to this industry? Right. So rather than handing them one sheet of paper that says, here's the price, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. saved all that for last. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right. And, <laughs> and I'm glad, by the way, I'm glad you made the comment about last. I, I tell people, whatever you do, never put the price in the opening letter. You know, in that letter you say, thank you for lending us opportunity to present a proposal. You notice I said proposal, not bid for presenting a proposal. Because once you put a price in the letter, if you're high, they just say, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
If, you, if you're low, they, where do I sign? You know, so what you want to do is put it together so that your pricing becomes maybe midpoint of your proposal so that when they look at it, if you're within 10 or 15 percent of what they think their budget is, or maybe what they're paying now, they say, this company provides so much more that, you know, maybe I ought to negotiate with them. Right. And the fact is, people say, well, the economy's tough. You know, everybody's price conscious. We all are. You know, when I buy floor finish or I buy mops or whatever, I want to get the best deal too. But, you know, and so, but what is it, what are they offering me, mm -hmm. you know, in exchange? So when you get to about to the middle, you want to tell them all the reasons why they should be buying from you. Do you have a better training program? Do you, what's your, what's your technology and your training? You know, all the things that sets you apart. Do you have partnering meetings with your customer every three months? What is it that you do that sets you apart? Right. Do you have a lead certified professional? A credit, I guess they call it accredited professional. But what are those things? Put it in the proposal about mid, midway. And when you get through with that section, then we start talking about specifications. Then we start talking about pricing. And you see, if you've done all your thing put all these sections together properly, then they start saying, let's negotiate the price. Right. You know, and the, the agreement, the other thing too, we don't put in there a service contract. We put in there that it's a maintenance service agreement. I found that contract scares people. Exactly. If you say this is an agreement, no, I can sign an agreement. Right. But if you say it's a contract, you don't either, and you don't make them for a year, you just make them evergreen. Right. And I've heard you say that many oh, yes. times to your members. Yeah, just make it contracts. an evergreen contract. <laughs> this, this, this agreement becomes, I, I just said the word contract, an evergreen agreement. This agreement becomes effective such and such date and remains in effect until and unless either party gives, and I use 90 days written notice. Mm -hmm. but, and then you put in there other services that you provide in the in your proposal as well. You tell them what else that you do. And so you go through these sections, and so as you get to the end, you know, then you have an opportunity to talk about negotiating, right. you know, if they want to. Now, if you're 50% higher, you probably aren't gonna have a chance, but I always tried to be within that 10 to 15% range of where maybe my competition was or where, where maybe the, the customer was budgeting so that he said, you know, I'll figure out a way to make up that 10%. Okay. You know, so, okay. That's great. So, I mean, I think you can see the difference now between what is a bid and what is a proposal. So mm -hmm. let me just end by asking you a quick question about winning the customer. What's your best advice on winning the customer? When, winning, the, winning the customer is providing them, number one, doing a thorough, doing a thorough walkthrough. When you do the presentation, you know, be early, be on, be on time, sit next to the prospect, have a proposal that looks good, be able to close, you know, know the closing yep. signs, because <laughs> every time they say no, it's another chance to close. But those are the, you know, don't speak ill of your competitor. Make sure that you are talking to the people who can make the decision. And if they can't make the decision, you want to ask, who is making the decision? Is it a committee? Are there three other people? And if there are three other people on the committee, give them three proposals, you know, three copies of mm -hmm. the proposal. Right. Sit next to the prospect so that you can, so that you can control the, 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 how you turn the pages. Right. You know, so that if you just hand it to them, you know, the first they're thing gonna, they're going to do they're is look, flip, for, look yeah. for the price. You know, where's the price? <laughs> and if you can sit next to them, you know, if we can, if I can show you this, and I, I control when you do this, right. works so much better. Now, one last thing. Sometimes you'll have a prospect who is totally, and you know this going in, they're totally price conscious. I have on cases where I knew that, was told that, I left the price out. You know, and I just didn't put a price in there. <laughs> So when they start looking for that price, it isn't there. And I will tell them, it's not in there because first we have to agree on what it is that you want to buy right. and you know what specifications are there. And once we've decided that, you've purchased the specifications, 
then we'll give you a price. Right, that's a great idea. But I always go in there, in my mind, and they say, well, these specs that you gave us are just perfect. Well, with that in mind, you know, it's going to be about, oh, $800, give or take 10 or 15%. Does that sound about right? And then you know, if they say, well, that's about right, then, then you, you know, know you're in the ballpark. Then you're in the ballpark. And they <laughs> say, that. oh my gosh, no. Well, where do we need to be? And if you've done your homework and done your proposal properly, not bid, you see, you've got a window to jump out of. You can say, okay, how can we get to your budget? But if you take the Vanity Fair napkin and write the price on, what happens? If you're, you're wrong. You're done. You're done. <laughs> you're done. So anyway, All right. I get a little long-winded on this, Gene, because it is such a passionate subject yeah, with me, you as, you tell, know, yeah. as you know. You can tell Dick's passionate <laughs> about this subject, so I really appreciate you talking about yeah. it because I know people have heard it, and if you have bought Dick's book, yes. um, one of his books on selling contract cleaning services, he does discuss that in there, so I recommend that you get that. So thank you, Dick. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. You bet. My pleasure.